Hey beloved, welcome or welcome back to my corner of the interwebs. My name is Sally if you're new here and I'm so glad you found me. Thank you for clicking this video. Subscribe if you haven't already and hit that notification bell to yeah to be notified of videos that I upload. Welcome back to the series. I think this is episode what three or two? One of the two. And this one is a juicy juicy one. <laughs> so I'm a Christian, but sex told you it was juicy. Yeah, sex. Okay, Sally, <laughs> calm down. <laughs> Please, calm down. <sighs> Here's why. I'm like this because I'm a first generation millennial. First generation millennial means like we are the in between us, you know, the bridge. We were born in the 80s, raised in the 90s. You know, when I ever beginning with anyone. That's a whole other thing. But my generation, the very first millennials, which is also known as Generation X, um, in my opinion. Um, where was I? I lost my train of thought. Oh, sex was taboo back in the days in the 80s. Sex was taboo. You never had the sex talk with your parents, you never talked about sex, and if you did talk about sex, it was hush, 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 hush tones. And it wasn't just something that you talk about in the open, which in turn caused a lot of problems because it a butterfly effect. Because now it was so hush hush, people were doing everything in the dark and in, 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 in behind closed doors, you know. And not the not our parents, not the school, not the church was talking about it. So you'd find a lot of people were having sex and were fornicating with each other and um, were masturbating and dealing with other things that sex opens. Other things in the Pandora's box that sex opens <laughs> that we don't talk about. But here we are talking about sex. Why? Because when you're a Christian, the Bible teaches you to keep yourself pure, right? To keep your body pure, to keep your mind pure, to keep your thoughts and your soul and everything about you pure. Pure in the sense of so that God can use you. Like, not that properly or anything. Not like he's not going to use you because you're not pure. Nah. I mean, the whole essence. That's what we teach in Bible. Not in Bible school. In church. If you keep yourself pure, God can use you more and you will be prosperous and you can, you know, make it in life and be wealthy and all these things. But I talked about money last week. Was it last week? Last video. We talked about money. Check somewhere here yeah. about that video. Um, but you see, that's the essence of what you're taught, right? Uh, keep yourself pure so that God can dwell. You know, your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, and all that. And I agree with it to hundred percent. But then, what happens to those people who, before they found Jesus, they had sex before, or they're no longer vir virgins, or they were raped, or something just happened that their body is not pure anymore. You know, now do we stop being Christian? Or does that make us any less of a Christian? And now, unfortunately, for that group of people, they feel like I'm not wanted in church anymore because I'm not this pure person who did everything by the books. Using my example as myself as an example, because born and raised in the church, born and raised in the church. I, the first time I got saved, because <laughs> we all got saved the first time in high school when, you know, those are all account in Form 1 and everybody had to get baptized. Yeah, we got saved that first time in Form 1. So that very first time I got saved, everything was good until after high school when I got into campus and met boys. And I was so fascinated by them and my sex talk. I think I've said this story before, but if you haven't heard it already, my sex talk with my parents was boys are bad 
that was it <laughs> that, that was what it was told boys about it me being a curious cat i went to I, i'm like i'm a see for myself and got pregnant at 19 but that's besides the point that's an after for another day but you see i i lost my virginity and that opened up pandora's box in itself because now i was like i had this newfound freedom and I'm having sex and let's not talk about the drugs and alcohol and the drinking and everything that I went with with it I was having sex and sex is amazing but then you know what to do ask any married couple or anyone who's had sex because we all know we be having sex in the church <laughs> Let's not lie. We'll be having sex in the church as Christians. We'll be funny getting out of our minds in the church. And we go to church and be on the pulpit and, you know, we have water fellowshipping. That Sabbath morning, or Sunday morning. <laughs> and, and worship, you know, and reading the Bible and preaching. Telling people, stay away. Wow, the light has just said to come and it's, wow. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry about that. So, um, what was I? Yeah, we be we be doing things that we're not supposed to be doing as Christians, and we be walking around church like nothing has happened, and we'd be over here in Sabbath or or or, or Sunday, and we are all up with Jesus the whole day, and then come that night when the ex texts you where you at, what you doing, or when he texts you with the ex or the booty call, or you know what I'm talking about. That person just texts you, "Hey, is out, come through." You be like packing a, a, a an overnight bag. You know what I mean? But we don't talk about it in the church because it's shut up on. It's we yeah, are not supposed to sex is supposed to be in the confines of a marriage, which I totally agree with. But what happens to some of us who've had it already? Right? And when we now we're trying to get back into the essence of things, right? You know? The conversation here I'm trying to have with you is I'm a Christian but I can't help but have this urges because I've already tasted what it feels like to have sex. I've already I've already been there, I've already experienced it. So I am going to have this urges because that's just how the body works. You know? And that's why a lot of people are encouraged if you still have a dream stay one for as long as you can. Stay one. Trust me, you don't want to open that Pandora's box. But for those of us who already had sex, there's that urge. And we don't talk about it. We just told her, you know, you can stop to contact. You can this be the secondary virgin. And <laughs> I'm trying. Bruh. <laughs> I'm trying. But if I see a dude over here with some urges, the urges are going like, to be like, where? <coughs> Wow. I'm sorry, someone's calling me. Yeah, so where was I? Right, we're talking about ah, the flesh. <laughs> And I will be lasting about oh, this gorgeous man that <laughs> the Lord has created. <laughs> Because hey, believe it or not, there's some gorgeous people outside there. Yeah, you are beautiful and wonderfully made and you look good and I will last over you. I'm not supposed to <laughs> because I'm supposed to control my flesh. But my body, my body is just thinking of how I've just undressed you and smashed. You 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 get what I mean? It's just it just happens. See, <laughs> the scene has come to well and everything has just gone to the shit. But that's besides that's what's my point? I lost my train of thought. Yes, what I mean is, um, you be out here, especially if you've tasted the forbidden fruit. <laughs> Question quotes. Forgetting about it is going to be hard. It's not impossible, but it's hard. You understand? So this conversation is about telling that person who feels. Like me feels like, hey, what am I supposed to do with everything? First of all, consult Jesus, because he's gonna, you know, restore you back to where you're supposed to be. But the mind is willing, the flesh is weak. 
that's I think Paul said that one time. It's just about controlling your urges. It's 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 hard to control your urges. I'm not I'm not gonna sit here and just tell you just control your urges. Pray about it. You should pray about it. But this is just I feel like a a thing as big and as sensitive as sex needs more than just prayer. You know what I mean? It needs more than just prayer. You can't just pray about it and okay, you can and most you can face. You can pray about it and it'll go away. But I feel like it needs more than just prayer. I'm a Christian. But I've had sex before. And I'm trying and I'm trying to practice it secondary virginity. I am in a relationship right now. And there's moments that I'm just looking at my mind and I'm like, I want I want to eat you up, you know. And it's not even my mind, it's even when I was single and I was looking at that dude. It comes, the urge is there. The urge is definitely there. What do you do? You won't the first your first instance is not gonna drop down on your knees and pray. It's not. <laughs> you know, first you're going to you be like taken aback and like, whoa. Okay. So we went there. Right. Uh okay. Let's regroup and come back to the reality of things. Y- you know? And then maybe pray about it. But what what do you do when you have the urge? And you're by yourself and you're just in your head, which I have most of the time. And you're thinking about it and you can't stop thinking about it. And you put on worship music and hill song is playing in the background, but you're thinking about food and getting on the other side. Like has that ever happened to you? You know? You could even be praying, but then you get distracted, and then you start your mind goes to the gutter. <laughs> and you're wondering, but where am I like this? Surely. I mean Jesus did not die on the cross for me to be like this. Anyway, what are your thoughts? I want to know if you if you struggled with this, you know, you're a Christian, but you struggle with the sort of sex, the sort of, the sort of keeping yourself pure until marriage, until you, your life partner, whom God has dropped in your lap or brought into your path and all these nice things. And if you've already had sex like me and are getting back into the part of things, like what do you do to stop thinking about it or stop having the urge or stop distract your mind or yourself from thinking about these things and live a fulfilling Christian life and not feel guilty about having those thoughts? Because personally, I think you shouldn't feel guilty. I mean, you're human and you have just the forbidden fruit and you had a part and God forgives all things. If you repent and give your heart to him, and there's a way he can just, you know, make you anew. Just like that. There's a way he can just make you anew. But it's not just him who is doing the work. You also have to do the work with yourself. Does that make sense? I want to know what you guys think in the comments down below. Share this video with anyone you think will benefit from it. And like, comment, share, follow me on my socials, everything is in the description box down below. Subscribe if you haven't already and click the notification bell to be notified of any videos I throw up in this amazing series. I love that you guys are reaching out to me and DMing me and having conversations with um, your friends and family and everybody in your church group, which is, that's all good. That's amazing. I want a new experience. Let me know in the comment section below. Know that I love you and God loves you too. Stay safe, stay blessed. Until the next video, I'll see you soon. Bye.